Alrighty. Here we have a league match between Viola Ninja and Darth Sensitive. Uh, I went ahead and checked the standings, and it looks like Viola Ninja went 4-2 in their first league match, and Darth Sensitive sitting at uh, 1.5 to 4.5. So Viola Ninja is currently in first place in their division quite preliminarily, and I assume Darth Sensitive is looking to make up some ground. Let's look at the kingdom we've got here. So uh, draw, we got Journeyman, Rabble, Seer, and potentially, eventually, Warrior from uh, the page line. Actions, well, there's ports. There's also champion, which will give unlimited action. Plus buy is only market. And the uh, the trashing is raise. And that's about it. So what are we doing here? I guess there is a question how big you build. Like on the one hand, I could see a deck that just sort of builds to consistently single province reasonably quickly. You can get plenty of silvers off of delve. Seer plays nice enough with delve. Uh, maybe you trash a little bit and you just start greening as soon as you hit one province. Uh, I feel like you can build bigger here, though. It seems like a pretty strong kingdom. Once you get champion in play, all these terminal draw cards all of a sudden look super good. You know, Journeyman, Rabble, etc. Uh, because if actions are no consequence, then Rabble's basically like two laboratories uh, rather than one. Because you're drawing net two cards instead of net one. Same thing with Journeyman. And so uh, I think you could, you could build reasonably large. Market for plus buy is fine. And I think with race is good enough trashing that all of that's going to come together pretty quickly. I would think about having a second page um, because you know one consideration is with Wolfden around you at negative three points per uh, copy. I don't know what a good way. To, yes, <laughs> negative three points per card you have exactly one copy of, and so champion will be worth negative three points for you if you have it. But one thing you could maybe do to prevent that is like you know, send a second page up the line and advance two of them. And then towards the end of the game, turn your second page into a champion as well uh, to neutralize that negative three points. Not the most important thing ever, but it's something worth thinking about because it's something you have to do, to do you know, in advance. As far as the opening goes, uh, I think 5-2, uh, I'm not totally sure, maybe Seer page. 4-3, um, probably page raise, something to that effect. Um, not 100% sure whether you want to silver or not because you could do like page and then delve raise on the four dollar turn but i'm not sure whether they actually want a silver or not like you get silvers inevitably off of treasure hunter and you don't necessarily need a ton of silvers like early on you're just looking to get thin and play your page repetitively and the silvers might get in the way of that so i could see this opening purely like page raise over page silver raise and just decline the free silver i'm not totally sure uh i am ambivalent on that they got poacher and silver and then poacher and page poacher silver seems odd i guess dar sensitive just doesn't plan towards playing with the page line at all. That seems strange to me. You know, champion's real strong. But maybe. And then Poacher Poacher page seems fine. Uh, I would I would rather open something that can trash my cards though. Because thinning is very good and thinning is much better when you do it early. You trash that one copper turn three and it's out of your deck every single shuffle for the rest of the game. So it pays off very quickly. Uh, much more so than I think uh, Poacher is. Poacher wouldn't be a bad opening if I was like desperate to hit five, but I think you could definitely be totally fine here not hitting five too much in the early game. Like they're they're good fives, but they're not like absolutely necessary fives or anything. All right. Um, Dar sensitive getting point uh, not points ports, which I guess makes sense if they're going to skip the page for some reason. Uh, that's their only source of action. The raise seems good. I think this is a kingdom where you, you, know, I mean, you want multiple races in general because it's the only trasher and it trashes relatively effectively. And so I would expect you know, two, maybe even three races to be bought. All right. Uh, Viola Ninja buys a gold. Dislike. Very, very strongly dislike. Don't buy golds. Never buy golds. Uh, for a lot of reasons. Firstly, their deck's not together yet. You don't want to add payload until you're consistently drawing your deck, playing all your cards every turn. They're very clearly, you know, nowhere near drawing their entire deck each turn, so it's not time yet to add payload. You want to add more draw cards, like a Seer, or... Uh, probably not a Rabble quite yet. I mean, they, no, they could even justify, like, adding, like, a Rabble or a Journeyman, because they're about to have Champion pretty soon. And so that Journeyman or Rabble will be going to the same shuffle as that Champion. But I think Seer would also be totally fine. Something to that effect. Uh, secondly, gold just seems so much worse than silver here. You can just pick up silvers incredibly cheap. Like, for six, you could get three silvers at the cost of no buys. The silver plays more nicely with Seer. 
Uh, you get the silvers for free off of Treasure Hunter. There's much easier ways to get Paleo into your deck than wasting key $5 plus buys on a gold. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty strongly opposed to the gold buy, as is typically the case. I, I feel like pretty much every, uh, you know, J League, H League, I League match I commentate involves just like every game. It's, oh, they bought a gold. Dislike. Let me explain why gold is bad for the hundredth time. Just don't buy golds, and then we won't have this problem. Um, okay, they pick up a market. Market makes sense. You know, you're going to want plus buy, and it's the only source of plus buy. And, you know, once you start to get around to drawing your deck, um, it's a good time to start adding some plus buy. Although I'm not quite sure they're at that stage yet. Okay, so Viola Ninja is saying, I'm not going to bother building very big. I'm just going to go straight for provinces. And um, I don't like that a whole lot. I, I think you do want to build more. I mean, Viola is the one who got the page early on, whereas Dar Sensitive skipped it. If I'm getting the page, it's because I want to get the champion and then draw a ton of cards and play a huge big engine. I'm not sure what exactly their game plan here is but it feels a little bit inconsistent to me. So what's Dark Sensitive do? You're trashing a copper. Um, do you pop the other rays? Oh, they pop this rays first. Okay then. Wait, that's a... No, I don't like this order at all. So they had two rays in their hand. If you were gonna pop a rays to, to draw a card, the rays can trash itself. And then you'd still have a second raise in hand to trash that copper for you. This was real inefficient because they used one raise to trash the other raise, which still it still trashes one raise. It still lets you choose either of the top two cards in your deck, but it has the consequence of just needlessly getting a raise out of your hand so that you can't trash that turn. I'm not really sure what the rationale was for that. All right, yeah, we're, we're going to see them not build very big. They're just going to go for a single province, which, yeah, I mean, it's fine, but I think it's underplaying the kingdom a bit. Around this time, you're also going to want to start paying a lot of attention to what cards you have exactly one copy of. E.g., Viola Ninja has exactly one copy of uh, Peddler, and should probably be looking to pick up a second one soon-ish. I would also want to check how many estates they had before considering whether to trash that one. In fact, let's do that now. V trashes... They've trashed exactly one estate. So there could be a good argument for Viola Ninja here to trash the copper and keep that estate around. Because if you trash that one estate and uh, never get around to trashing the other one, you'll be in this awkward situation where you've got uh, negative four victory points from that. You know, minus one for losing the estate, plus minus three for now having a Wolfston penalty for having one estate left. Honestly, I would have seriously considered, given the nature of Viola Ninja's deck, just trashing the champion. <laughs> like, the, the game is almost over. The champion's worth negative three points. And getting it out of your deck is like getting a free duchy. And, I mean, Champion should be a phenomenal card here. Like, I would think Champion is, like, the centerpiece of the ideal deck here that has lots of draw cards and lots of plus buy. But they didn't actually bother to put in any of the other cards that really benefit from Champion. And so playing it now maybe gives you, like, one turn of use out of it. And trashing it now, A, gets you three points immediately, and B, gets you a very nice selection of cards from your raise. You get to see six cards. And so... Perhaps the best strategy there was to cut their losses and trash it. Likewise, as dart sensitive, I'd be checking whether or not I had uh, one estate left or two estates left. D trashes an estate. So that was their third estate. So maybe they checked and they verified that it was in fact good to trash that estate before doing so. Who has one poacher? Okay, so Dar Sensitive has exactly one poacher. If I were them, I'd be looking to buy a poacher here. Uh, they might have also had exactly one market, in which case that might have also made sense. Let's check. Games uh, market. D, D, D. Nope, they. Yeah, I'm not liking that market buy. They already had two markets, so they weren't getting Wolfston points off of that. Buying the poacher gives you the one coin anyway, and it comes as a plus three points because you're neutralizing the Wolfston from your previous poacher. So the, uh, the market buy seems pretty bad to me, especially because there's two provinces left and they're behind in points. You need to be looking for ways to score points. Um, not really a fan of that at all. Like, imagine you buy Poacher Raise as Dora Sensitive. That scores you six points. And now, I mean, 
counterfactually, now if you've done that, you can win this turn by buying the last province. And now buying a province is losing because they elected not to score any points last turn. So I guess you just buy Poacher here for the three points. Who has the duchy? Gains a duchy. Yeah, I mean, you know, buying the duchy doesn't really help you because it's not worth any points. So you're, you're still in the situation where you can't afford to buy the province. Uh, this looks like a, a win for Viola Ninja. I'm not seeing how Dar Sensitive scores that many points in this time frame. All right, win in hand. Yeah, so I feel like both of them paid insufficient attention to the Wolfston points here. The Peddler and the Champion were avoidable. The Poacher and the Rays were avoidable. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, and that was Dar Sensitive's turn to go first. So they will now be playing down one and playing as player two. Let's take a look at the next kingdom. So we have hideout is the only source of plus action. It's a little bit awkward because you have to trash things to, to feed the hideout if you want plus action. Tragic hero is a kind of unreliable source of draw because it <laughs> offs itself if you have too many cards in hand. Scholar can draw, haunted woods can draw. Uh, trashing is also hideout slash mint. There's plus buy in the form of Tragic Hero. Again, a little bit awkward because you buy it for the plus buy, and then it kills itself, and then you need to get another one. Uh, Coven attack might matter. Probably not that much. How do you open here? Hmm. Tough call. I, I think I kind of like Hideout and Prove. Uh, I mean, you can always consider opening with, like, like just opening, like, a mint or something like that. Uh, it's also a very realistic possibility because you've got that Baker token, but yeah, actually, I'm not. I'm not totally sure. I don't. I don't like the Coven open that much. I don't think Coven's that important here. With the hideouts, I mean, you ought to be trashing your estate. So six curses are going to get given out just by the hideouts, whether you play Coven or not. So that Coven is at most, you know, dishing out four curses. I think you could live with skipping Coven and just eating the curses and trashing them again with hideouts. I like Hideout Improve because you have the potential to like upgrade that Hideout into a 5 cost card and then you can replace it with another Hideout later. I could also consider like just opening with Mint or something like that uh, just to get a lot of those coffers trashed fast. I, th I think I like the Hideout line better though. I want to trash the Estates and then maybe if I can get a few Estates trashed I'll line up a good Mint turn and a, a turn or two. Haunted Woods could be fine maybe. Uh, like Haunted Woods to set up a big Mint turn on a future turn and trash a bunch of coffers that way. Um, yeah, they, those are all the openings I think I'm strongly considering. All right, but let's see what they actually did. So Viola took Coven Improve. I mean, I don't I don't love the Coven, but it's fine. Star Sensitive took Silver Coven. I like the Improve over the Silver. You're not needing the the terminal space early on because. Both of them have opened with a, a non-terminal action coven, so there's no is issue with terminal collision. And I would very happily just play that improve once, in which case it's a de facto silver that turn, and then immediately turn it straight into a hideout, which is a more valuable card. Which I think uh, Viola Ninja should do here. What do you buy here as Viola? I'd probably take a Haunted Woods. Haunted Woods seems like a real good way to set up for a big mint turn. And then you have your hideout to trash the estates, the mint will trash the coffers, and they decide coven instead. Sad. So you're definitely turning that improve into a hideout now. Yep, they did that. That's good. On three, I think you just buy improve, and they buy silver. Again, I think silver is just improve, but worse here because you can turn that improve immediately into a hideout the first time you play it. Still think a Haunted Woods would be good for Viola and they buy a third coven. This just seems so excessive. And given that they're both going heavy for coven, I, I would think getting hideouts ASAP would be of 
of great importance to me. I want to get all of the estates and coffers out of my deck before those curses hit. Haunted Woods helps set up the mint turn. Hideout helps trash the estates. It also lowers the curse pile, so there's fewer to give out. Um, so that, that's where I'd be headed. I'd buy a Haunted Woods here. Could be a Scholar, I guess. Scholar also draws a lot, especially with Coven around. Well, no. Scholar is only good for Viola if they line it up with their hideout, which... Do they have two of those? Oh, they have both of the hideouts right now, so I guess Scholar would be fine for Viola. Uh, not not really sure what Darth Sensei's game plan here is, but it doesn't seem to involve trashing their cards at all, which seems like a pretty big mistake to me. I would just, I would buy a mint here. Get rid of all those coppers, please. All right, I like that. Okay, so they're gonna trash the cards just very belatedly. Now, next step for Darth Sensei is to finally get that hideout that they've been passing up on all game. And then they'll be able to trash the estates just in time for the curses to come in. Third hideout honestly seems fine. Could also be an improve. Mission's okay too. Get in some extra curses, I guess. Um, they should buy March here, and they can march to the last coven to get give out the last curse. Marching the hideout would have also been totally fine. Yeah, that was a pretty productive mission turn. Get in three more curses. This is looking pretty good for, for Viola. What's the curse count? Seven to three? Yeah. I mean, Dara's sensitive. Like, I, the, the covens shouldn't scare you that much, I don't think, because if you skip them, you should get a hell on trashing. Like, you get the hideouts earlier, you get the haunted woods to get the mint earlier. But it doesn't feel like Dara's sensitive has particularly prioritized trashing more. Um despite also being behind on the covens. And so I'm not really sure they have any compensation for for being behind on curses. This looks to be in Viola's favor. <laughs> Dar sensitive with the puns in the chat. So what does Viola buy here? Uh, I'm not totally sure. Improve Haunted Woods, something like that maybe. Improve Scholar. Scholar seems totally fine. It plays well with the, the Covens. I'd be looking as Viola, I think, to improve Covens into Golds if I had nothing more productive to do with my improves because now that the Curses are out, the Coven's basically just a Silver. Admittedly, it's a Silver that plays a little bit nicer with Scholar because you can play it before the Scholar and then draw one anyway. But I don't think I'm really looking to have a Scholar-based deck in the long term. So I would happily you know, turn the, the Coven into a gold. Now you can also consider upgrading the Hideouts, but I think you actually kind of want the Hideouts for the, the plus action. Yeah, like here is Viola. I think I would just um, buy a draw card, probably Haunted Woods, and then turn the... Uh, or maybe, maybe Tragic Hero, the plus buy is also valuable. Take the Tragic Hero, turn the Coven into a gold. As star sensitive, uh, is faithful home better than nothing? Maybe, not totally sure. Um, buying a gold, blah. Trashing the coven into a gold seems totally fine, but you're gonna get all the gold you need from the uh, improving covens, tragic heroes inadvertently popping themselves and so forth. I would think the the thing that's harder to come by here is draw, and I would not pass up on buying a draw card to get a gold. Like I said, I think a lot of these, I think, what, what division is this? This is I League, or no, H League? I think this is H League. In any case, it's the, um, the buy gold more than necessary um, d division, and so, um, I expect we'll be seeing a lot of games where they buy gold and I complain about it. Uh, good looking turn for Viola though. Uh, this is... Uh... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is like there's, there's a lot of tips that apply to like a majority of the leagues. Like, you just group all of the, the bottom half of the leagues, which is like a, a good like three quarters of the divisions, and just be like, stop buying golds, please. Um, build bigger. Um... Oh, 
what, what advice do I? It, it's hard to identify like a particular thing I would say to like D League or something. I'm not exactly sure. And I think by the time you're in D League, different people are like deficient in different areas. Like some people, their problem is like dealing with three piles. Some people, their problem is uh, they underestimate the strength of engines. Uh, there's a pretty consistent set of trends that I think a lot of people in the earlier divisions do, though. <laughs> yeah, th this looks pretty solidly one for <laughs> Viola, though. They're going to be up 2-0 by the end of this. We'll see if Darth Sensitive can come back. Yeah, I think Hana, which is clearly better than Scholar there. Buy another Tragic Hero, another Haunted Woods maybe. Nope, just another gold. Okay then. You know, Tragic Hero is like, it, it gets you the, the same result. You get the gold anyway, eventually, but you also, in the short term, get a better card, which is plus two cards and plus one buy. I wouldn't mind a single Baker. You know, Baker's not like a super strong card or anything, but having, you know, a, an extra coin token or two, or they're called coffers now, uh, an extra coffer or two can be kind of helpful in uh, smoothing out your turns, like in an inconsistent deck like this, where like, oh no, maybe I hit seven, well, I've got a, a coffer stored up. So I, I wouldn't mind a, a Baker buy around these, this time either. As Viola, I think I'm fine popping the Tragic Hero around now. We're getting to the territory where the, the gold is not that bad. Uh, and see, you could consider playing the Tragic Hero before playing the Hideout, so you get the gold. They're going to play the Tragic Hero afterwards, but I think it's also totally fine. Um, what's this by? Probably just Province and Hideout. And then, that's probably more Hideouts than you need. So if you buy the Hideout here, you can consider upgrading one of those other Hideouts using your Improve into like a five cost again like a baker or a haunted woods or a tragic hero they just buy and improve instead which that's that's fine they're a little bit over terminal though i think that improve maybe could have been a silver because they don't really have enough actions to play all that and they now have a remarkably uh coincidental looking hand uh again this is like deja vu of two turns ago so I think it, they'll probably just do the same thing. Play Haunted Woods, buy... Please don't buy gold. Please don't. <laughs> you bought gold. Okay. Fair enough. The, Im the improves do help threaten three piles substantially. Although, as Viola, I think you're enough in the lead that you're not necessarily like looking for a three pile. And as Darth, you're far enough behind that you can't really threaten a three pile. So I doubt we'll see a 3-pile in this game, but Improve is definitely the sort of card that makes 3-piles in general a real threat. This is going to be an awkward next hand for Viola. You could consider just buying Mission here even, because you know you just top deck two provinces, and then you just sort of get your terrible turn out of the way on your Mission turn. They bought another Coven, which seems very strange to me. I don't know why you want Coven to this point in the game. It's basically like a $5 silver. Yeah, looking at this hand, I'm feeling pretty confident in my, my comment about buying Mission. Imagine you just got to get all three provinces out of the way on the turn that was otherwise going to be useless anyway. I, th I think uh, Province Mission would have been pretty nice. Now, is Dora sensitive? Not totally sure what you buy. They're marching something. I got to march a hideout to trash? Okay. Seems fine. I mean, none of it seems particularly winning. I'm pretty sure Vi Viola's got this game unlocked. Is it Viola? Viola? I have no idea. Vio, la ninja. Not not entirely sure what what that name is. Dar sensitive. I think I've got a good grasp on how to pronounce. Okay, dar sensitive seems to be. Uh, <laughs> are you questioning my pronunciation of Grakig? 
I don't, I don't understand uh, what, what you're implying there, Panda Bear Guy. This looks pretty resignable for Darcy. There's not really much point in playing this out. There's no way you're coming back from this, this level of a deficit. Don't be ridiculous. If it were Grace G, they would have put a space and or capitalized the Gs. That's clearly cracky. Surely Darth sees the writing on the wall here. Maybe they, I wonder if they're like the one of those folks. Like I, I've seen some newer players who like, they think maybe it's bad sportsmanship to resign, and so they just feel compelled to play it out. When in reality, their opponent's probably secretly just waiting for them to resign. Um, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe Darth Sinister is doing that. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think they seriously think they have a, a reasonable chance of winning this game. And so I, I, I must assume that they're playing this out of some sort of sense of duty that I think is misguided. It's like those videos where like the, the chicken has had its head chopped off and it like keeps running around for quite a while after that. That's kind of how I, how, kind of how I feel when I, when I see these games draw much longer than they ought to. You wonder if the chicken is aware of its situation. Well, now you know what kind of videos I watch. I just told you. Or like, you know, the same thing with bugs. You know, it often happens with insects where like they, they get like partly dismembered and then they, they're like exoskeleton is still moving around because it's still got the nerve endings. It is, I guess, technically possible for Darth to win if Viola passes like the next six turns straight. My money is on Viola, though. If I were a betting man, I would I would bet on Viola in this situation. Viola is still not quite technically at half points. I guess you could start considering improving the hideouts and the duchies now. Not, not that it really matters. They have the win in hand now. Does Darth buy province? They go for the fancy resign. Like, I think there's a not insubstantial number of players who are totally fine with ending the game by buying out the last province, but are not okay with pressing the resign button themselves. And that seems like an inconsistent philosophy to me, but I, I see it pretty frequently nonetheless. In any case, we're on to game three, and Darth gets to start this time. Ooh, Torturer. So what have we here? We've got Torturer draw, or Journeyman, or Smithy. And Harold can draw if it hits an action card. We've got no trashing at all. Oof. Actions are, we well got Exploration can get you some Villagers. Snowy Village is kind of awkward as an action, but it's an action. And Acting Troop also gets you Villagers. How does resigning versus playing it out and buying the province work? I mean, both result in the same thing, which is you lose the game. Um, but some people seem to think it's, uh, it's like wrong to click the resign button, but okay to buy the last province when you're in losing. 
and uh, like I don't understand why that would be the case. If you're the sort of person who just thinks like I should always play to maximize my chance of winning no matter what, then I guess I could see why you'd be opposed to resigning, but you also would just like never buy the last province unless you're winning. And I think most people seem to think it's okay to like buy the last province because you're like, oh, the game's over anyway, in which case you should also be fine clicking the resign button if you think you're lost. Uh, in regard to rating, oh, it has the same effect on your rating. Like all, all a rating cares about is whether you won or lost. It doesn't matter whether it was a resign or a three pile. It doesn't matter how many points you scored. It's just a win, a loss, or a tie. And so, like, resigning early versus waiting and playing it out versus trying to score more points, none of that's going to influence your rating. There's no point in running up the score or anything like that. It's just, like, a win-loss draw of the options. Anyways, back to this kingdom. Um, plus buy is just Snowy Village. I would think the goal here is basically to get off your torture chain before your opponent can. The curses look incredibly powerful because there's no way to trash them. And so I want to figure out how I can play multiple torturers before my opponent can. I would think that um, the way to do that, the opening, I'm not totally sure. I think I like the idea of opening exploration. The one extra coffer makes it really likely, perhaps guaranteed, that you will hit uh, five in your first reshuffle and pick up the torture early. And the villager might come in handy you know, later if you collide two torturers or something and want to play both. I think scavenger could also be a viable opening, or even double silver, or silver warehouse, anything that maximizes, or even smithy silver, stuff that increases your chance of hitting, chance of hitting five. Uh, but I think my choice would be something like uh, exploration silver. And then the goal, of course, is to get torturers and play the torturers. How exactly do they open? Oh, Dark Sensitive has five too, and just gets to open with a uh, torturer. Now there was a question in the chat about. Uh, whether to get scouting party versus torturer. Let me think about that. Oh, not scouting, not scouting party versus torturer. Scouting party versus haven. Um, so you have coming up a deck that's five coppers and a torturer. If you buy scouting party, you'll top deck a torturer and two coppers. Then you will play the torturer and trigger a shuffle. Um, hmm. That sounds kind of good to me. How big is that shuffle? You'll have eight cards coming up. You'll draw... Wait, no, I need to think about this. So your next hand is going to be Torture, two coppers, two other cards. I, I like the Scouting Party play better because seeing Torture turn three seems a, a good deal better than seeing it turn four. If you see Torture turn three, you had five cards in your hand, you drew three more, you've seen eight of your cards. So you're now shuffling a new shuffle that's got the torture in it, and you're almost back. You could potentially see the torture again as soon as turn four, and that's real nice. Whereas if you see the torture turn four, you have this problem of you got a five card hand and an empty deck. So as soon as you play that torture, it's going to trigger a shuffle that doesn't have the torture in it, and then you're going to be a little longer to find it again. And so I'd much rather find the torture when it's not triggering a new shuffle for me, namely turn three. And so that scouting party guarantees that it guarantees the torture is on top so i think i like that play haven's a good card uh, especially when you can't trash setting aside cards with haven is really nice but it also plays a little awkward with torture because like you can draw the haven dead i would definitely take haven over nothing but i think i like the scouting party more than the haven uh, anyways let's see how this plays out viola takes silver exploration i like that uh, dark sensitive takes a second torturer hmm I think that's fine. Uh, I mean, again, you want to play a lot of tortures. The issue is, you know, Dar Sensitive at that point in time has no way to chain them. Uh, I, I, I think you could get a second torture, but with the intent of getting villagers relatively soon. Um, but as I say that, they, they didn't follow up with a flag bear, which is a third terminal, and they still have no villages, and I'm starting to like their play a whole lot less. All right. Viola gets a Torture on turn four. That seems good. Then a Smithy. I'm not sure how I feel about the Smithy. They didn't even have a village yet. I, I would think as Viola, I'd be looking to take a village there. Snowy Village, Acting Troop, something. Even passing their turn gets them a villager would honestly not be the worst thing ever. Dar Sensitive buys a gold. I I don't need to, to sound like a broken record. I think everyone knows how I feel about buying golds at this point. Uh, suffice to say, my opinion on buying golds has not changed since the last two games. Uh, I'm not quite caught up yet, so I cannot effectively answer whether Acting Troop 
here is good. I'm trying to follow the log after getting a little bit behind in the opening. Um, Snowy Village seems good. Torturer seems good. Providence seems awful. Um, this is too early to start scoring. All right, now I'm caught up. Where are we at? No curses have been given yet. Yeah, I, I would not want to buy a province until curses are empty. Curses just look way too painful. All I want to do is play as many torturers as I can and just force them to pass all the turns or take all the curses. And buying golds and buying provinces both actively get in the way of me doing that. So Viola has gotten off two torturers. Although they are spinning villagers to do it. I think as Viola, I would be looking to buy Snowy Village here. The plus buy seems super important right now, as do the villages. Not the the actions, that's the word I, I wanted. What else could you buy here? Acting Troop, maybe? Snowy Village and Acting Troop really seem like the only things you could even consider buying. And Snowy Village just seems better. I like the choice to, to Scouting Party first. You know there's a bunch of junk on top. That was good. They bought another tor- How do you plan on playing all those Torturers, Viola? Your deck is running on fumes. You just spent all the villages you banked up over the last few turns on that one singular turn. You need villages. Add the village. All right, village time now. Uh, you can, I would scout Eaton Party first because you know two of your torches have already been seen and you know the village is definitely not in the top five cards because you haven't bought it yet. So like scouting party first and then buy a village. Snowy village, yeah, there we go. All right, that was a good choice. And store sensitive, I would consider buying acting troop or exploration here, I think. You want again you still want the villages. You could also buy torture, I guess, because Star Sensitive does have a village already perhaps too. Yeah, they have two snowy villages. They could consider buying a third torture here. That'd be totally fine. Uncontested flag bear does kinda matter. I I don't think I'd really want to be the first one to take flag bear, because it it's just better when you take it second here. Um, but I also wouldn't want to leave, leave my opponent with the flag for too long because it's just like a free extra thing to discard a torture each time. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been more than four turns, hasn't it? They got it like turn four. They've had it six turns now. Um, I'd, be, I'd be looking to get that soon-ish as Viola. Uh, just pass here, I think. You'll get a villager and a, a coffer. You could consider buying Snowy Village Acting Tube as well. Uh, all three of those seem totally fine. Yeah, they're going to take the exploration. That, that seems good. Oh, this is a sad, sad shuffle for Darth Sensitive. That's both of their villages. Um, missing the shuffle right there. So they've got a bunch of terminals coming up and no way to play them. As Darth, I'm absolutely buying exploration here without a shadow of a doubt. You know you've got no villages left, no villagers left, and a bunch of terminals coming up. Only way to salvage that is to get at least one villager by buying exploration immediately. And you can buy Akin Troop, but you won't be able to get the villagers until you draw back to them. You could seriously consider not playing it, yeah. I mean, of course... A, the, the high roll is you, you play it, you draw like a torture, and you set off your torture chain, and you're really happy. I would have to think a lot more as to whether that gamble was worth it. But, uh, yeah, definitely just like not playing them at all is a, a serious consideration. As it turns out, Dar Sensitive buys a third Snowy Village, which is not going to salvage this turn. Snowy Village is not a card you want a ton of. Usually you want exactly one, because the second one really doesn't do anything beyond the first one, unless you just like really need the plus buy. Uh, here I could see two, just because your decks are not going to be like consistent enough to always find it early. 
and so having like one dud card is is fine uh i th i think i would prefer an acting troop over a third snowy village let alone the exploration issue first curse given by viola That tends to snowball. I still like the acting troops. They're all in on the snowy villages, but you're really gonna struggle to line all that up properly. And acting troops just seem nice for reliability purposes. All right, exploration better late than never. Oh no, I'm feeling it. Darth is gonna buy a province here and it's gonna be bad. Oh, Viola might actually help out. Perhaps Viola causes Darth Sensitive to discard enough cards that they no longer make the mistake of buying problems when they shouldn't. This is, these could actually be very helpful torturers. <laughs> I would just discard that. Don't even take the curse. Honestly, buying a five is not that much better than getting like a villager and a coffer from passing. And yeah, it, it wasn't worth taking the curse. In any case, Viola does seem to be in the lead. I suspect it goes back to that point where Darth Sensitive decided to, to buy gold and buy province rather than continuing to build a functional deck. Like they, they have a nicer opening, I think. The the five two is just like real nice in this kingdom where you can open torture and then top deck it. And then they they could have kept that pressure on consistently and they decided to not do that. And now Viola is doing the same thing, but in reverse to them. Yeah, here comes some torture plays from Viola. I think you discard the second snowy village. You know you can't play them both. Yeah. And now Darth discards a lot of cards, and or takes curses. Like, if you lose the curse split badly as a result of buying that early province, n not, like, even... It's getting pretty close to it, yeah. Um, I, I would say this is quite close to resignable. Like, buying that early province... Looks like six points, but if it causes you to lose this curse split eight two, it's cost you six points just from that alone, on top of hurting your deck because now you've got seven junk cards more than your opponent. The six extra curses plus the province. Yeah, wa watching people buy province in a in like games like this with torture and such around is just like watching kids fail the marshmallow test. Like you realize it's not your long-term interest, but they just like they can't pass it up. Oh, you don't know about the marshmallow test? Google marshmallow test. It's a nice, uh, it's a psychological experiment, I guess, for young kids. It's basically like a test of patience. Yeah, tune in to Dominion live streams and you'll learn lots of psychology. In game four, we'll talk about uh, Skinner and behaviorism. <laughs> yeah, they eat the marshmallow, even though it's not in their long-term interest. Yeah, what is Darth by now? Uh, acting Troop Torturer, I think, looks good. As Viola, I would really want to start thinking about buying the uh, Flag Bearer.
<laughs> I think it can depend on the marshmallows. Like I've had some French vanilla flavored marshmallows once that they were they were actually excellent, especially in hot chocolate. Then there's Lucky Charms marshmallows. I'm not even sure those really count as marshmallows, but those are those are basically just like actually I was gonna say they're basically just sugar, but it's kind of true of all marshmallows, isn't it? Um, anyways, about this game. Uh, where do we stand on the curse split? Oh, V is taking a curse. So it's three to one. I don't, oh, I, I see why this happened. While I was ranting about marshmallows, V bought a province and a silver, and I am upset by that. Don't buy province, there's curses to be given. Keep building your deck. Likewise, don't buy silver. There's action cards to be bought. You know, Viola really had Darth Sensitive's feet to the fire there with their torture chains, and then they appear to have decided to take the pedal off the gas. Could be Darth's way back in this? If they managed to even up the curse split? Also, please take the flag away. Nope, they're going to buy another province. Don't like that. Don't like that one bit. Yeah, they're really giving Darth a fighting chance here with all those province buys. Like, if you just give out all ten curses, your opponent's deck is in shambles, and you have, like, all the time in the world to come back and score the last few points. Uh, you really don't want to get it behind on the curses here. I would happily give up two or three provinces to win the curse split. Oof, not a pretty looking hand. Yeah, I mean, it's quite possible that those recent province buys have cost Viola the game. Because Darth is now kind of coming back on uh, torture attacks. Because Viola could not keep up the pressure. Like, I really just would not be touching anything but action cards until the curses were empty. Harold's hat. Let's see. I'm not a big fan of the Harold hat. It's kind of droopy looking. And it just seems like awkward. Why do you need that much hat off to the side of your head? Just like acting troop? Some of the acting troop have nice hats. Uh, the lady in blue has a, a nice function looking hat. Although weirdly positioned on her head. The fellow on the left wearing the black traffic cone. I don't know, that seems kind of annoying. Like just walking, walking through doors with a hat like that would be quite the pain in the butt. The fellow on the right has a nice hat though. Flag bearer has three different hats. Let me take a look at that. Ah, do helmets count as hats? Unclear. I think that's a, a, a definitional gray area. But those, those are nice practical hats. If a metal hat counts as a hat, I'll take it. It could be. It could be that helmets are a subset of hats. It could also be that just a helmet, while otherwise meeting the definitions of hat, just is not colloquially referred to as a hat. This is like that is a hot dog a sandwich debate. Now, there are people who assert that a hot dog is a sandwich, and I find that preposterous. Sure, it has all the like you know 
components that a sandwich would have, but uh, people just don't call it a sandwich, and there's just nothing more to it. Oh, the 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 dress was in fact black and gold, but I remember only being able to see the blue and white version. Laurel and Yanny, I don't remember what what my stance was on it. Now, I do remember what my stance was on buying torturers, which is always do it. And then these two have done that inconsistently. I would probably buy an acting troupe here. All right, flag bear is also very, very worthwhile. Flag bear or acting troupe both look good to me. Yeah, I like that. As Viola on this turn, I think I would seriously consider buying a Herald. You can overpay like two and top deck two nice things, like put a a Snowy Village and a Torturer on top or something. It might depend on whether you know what your bottom three cards are. Like if you knew there was a Snowy Village on bottom, you could just like top deck two Torturers. If you didn't know, I would just top deck like a Torturer and a Snowy Village to be safe. Honestly, like 95% of the time, Herald's overpay effect is basically ignorable. This is like a rare situation where I would strongly consider getting Herald largely for the overpay effect. It's also not like a bad card to have in your deck. Wait, what did they actually buy? They bought gold. <sighs> a moment of silence. That's just never gonna not not disappoint me. All right, uh, so where do we stand now? Dar sensitive turn. Oh, that's a lot of torturers and not a whole lot of actions. What a disappointing looking hand. They chose not to spend their villager. I think this is H. I think. There are still five curses left. There should not be four provinces bought. Okay, so what do you do is Darth Sen no, not as Darth Sensitive, it's Viola here. You've got a whole lot of money. And a whole lot of buys. Hmm. They're gonna buy province, I know it. I think Haven could be pretty good. Herald is fine. Acting Troop is fine. They went for a scouting party. That's also fine. Discard Copper Estate Flag Bearer, I would think. Yeah. They're discarding twice. Definitely the Torture on the top. I'm not sure they leave Smithy or, tor or, sw Smithy or Silver. Both seem okay. Uh, yeah, I would have expected to play one. I'm not not totally sure why they didn't. This is one of the positions where I'm like doubly sad to discard because as Dar sensitive, if you discard those two cards, not only is your hand smaller, you read to trigger a shuffle that now has two more junk cards in it because you just discarded them into that shuffle, which is quite the shame. Okay, so Viola does look to still be in the lead here, I think. Despite their uh, middle game misadventures. They still don't... Wait, why aren't they playing that warehouse? What am I missing? What conceivable reason could you have to not play the warehouse? It's not even like they're spinning a villager on it. They just decided not to play on and now they've got a terrible hand. I'm very confused by that choice. I have I have no idea. I can't think of any reason why you would not play that warehouse. You had three junk in your hand. You had an extra action. You already seen most of your good cards. I don't know. I truly don't.
I mean, I, I guess it ends up not mattering that much since they're just going to discard the whole hand anyway. Darth is behind, but I guess they're not out. Like, if they keep the torture pressure on, they give out three more curses, then they just have to buy the last two provinces in an estate. That is within the realm of possibility. Now, whether you play this snowy village is not clear. I think you could very reasonably choose not to play this one. In fact, I probably would not. Now as Darth, I guess you buy a province. In fact, actually, as Darth, I would buy a province and a state, I think. Uh, two times duchy, maybe. My thought process was, the way I envision Darth winning this game is if they get both provinces and like an estate, and they give up the last three curses or something. Um, you could... You know, buy two duchies and play for the long game. I think that's also quite possible. Um, but then you have to get, like, a bunch of duchies, right? You have to get, like, four duchies. Well, I mean, fortunate for Darth Sensitive, I'm pretty sure Viola is going to dud this next turn. Um, I'm no psychic or anything, but I have a strong suspicion that their turn is not going to kick off. That is too many... Stacking scouting parties like that really doesn't help you that much. Like, once you've top decked two good cards, that's about all your deck can reasonably do. And then the scouting parties just start hurting because you have to start, like, discarding good cards. Um... Huh. <sighs> As Viola, I would seriously consider just eating all the curses here. You got a warehouse in hand, so you can discard the curses uh, for extra draw. And you really need to have a turn. Take the other curse, I would think. Yeah, as as Darth, I would buy province and pray, even though seeing Viola's hand, we know that's a loss. I'm just not sure what other scenario leads to Darth potentially even winning. They're gonna buy a duchy, I assume, yeah, but like Single province here, I would think, now locks it up for Viola. Why aren't they playing the warehouse? I'm so confused. Am I hallucinating the warehouse that's been in Viola's deck this whole time? They already had three junk cards in hand. It's not like they were waiting to find more junk. I. They had an action. It's not like they needed to save the villagers. It was the first play of the turn. And they led with the terminal action instead of the non-terminal action. I don't really understand that. What? <laughs> no, don't. Why are you? Okay, so Viola had eight coins in hand and a single buy. So there's just no... Oh, I, I guess they wanted to buy a scouting party. I would much rather have a village than a scouting party. It is it is strange to me what they're willing to spend villagers on. They're willing to spend villagers on flag bearer to buy a scouting party, which just discards three cards, rather than spending villagers on the warehouse to just draw those cards in the first place. I don't get it. In any case, Viola is, is one. I don't think Darth Sensitive can do province plus triple duchy uh, with decks like this that are half junk cards. 
and Viola's hand looks set up to uh, to win here. There isn't really a good reason that I can see. Okay, yeah, this guy's one already. Go ahead and buy the province. Three o oh, four viola ninja. Going into game four. Torturers are a brutal card, a real brutal card. Uh, three for Viola, none for Darth. Viola start. Okay, what have we here? Draw, got Cursed Village for draw to X, Ravel for standard draw. Um, action. We got uh, Encampment is a village, Cursed Village is a village, Hideout is a village, plus buy, you can see way something to get plus buy, trashing, Hideout can trash, and I mean, technically Bishop can trash, but you don't use Bishop to trash. Um, so what do we do here? No, I'm not totally sure. But I feel like it involves building an engine that can get some golds and then bishop the golds. How do you open? Again, I'm not totally sure. This is, there's a lot of things that kind of look nice here. Like the encampments and plunders look kind of nice. The cursed village looks kind of nice. Bishop, not at early, but eventually bishop will look kind of nice. Rabble kind of, hideout kind of. Um, I believe this is H League. It's definitely a league match. I'm pretty sure it's H League. Um, and on 5 2, the encampment's easy enough, but I'm not sure what you take on the 5. Band of Misfits, maybe? Could go ahead and get the Seaway now, like Seaway Hideout or something. Could open Rabble. Uh, could take a Treasury. I, there's a lot of options here. Oh yeah, that's a good thing to point out. Um, so the thing, in unpronounceable username there is suggesting, is as long as encampment is in this pile, Band of Misfits can be played as encampment, and you you play the encampment basically straight from the supply, and then it gets to that part where it's like, if you don't set this aside and return it to the supply at the start of cleanup, and what that basically means is, if you're playing the encampment directly, you lose the encampment. But if you play it via Band of Misfits, that encampment's already in the supply. It can't move itself from the supply back to the supply. And so the Band of Misfits is basically playing the encampment at no cost. So you get functionally like a little Lost City effect, and you don't have to worry about the drawback. Because Band of Misfits won't return itself. What's going on there is the Band of Misfits is playing the encampment, which is trying to return itself, or set itself aside and then return itself. But the encampment can't move itself from the supply pile. So that makes Band of Misfits like temporarily really good. The problem, of course, is you couldn't like buy like ten bands, of, ten bands of misfits, um, with the intention of doing that. Because once the encampments leave the pile, then you can't do that anymore. But in the short term, it's definitely something to look out for. Uh, I still kind of like the idea of Seaway because with extra money, you can easily pick up some spare encampments. I'm not totally sure though. The fives are also nice. Band of Misfits is good. Yeah, any of the fives honestly looks kind of viable. <laughs> I like that Darth already has a hideout for trashing. Interesting that they trashed the copper first. I would definitely have bought an encampment there. 
Like there, there is a rationale, I guess, for trashing the copper first, which is, you know, you basically have to play a hideout twice to trash one estate. Once to, to trash it and get a curse, once to trash the curse. Whereas you trash the copper, it trashes it immediately. So trashing coppers first before estates does, you know, kind of strictly speaking, get your deck thinner faster. But the, the flip side there was you pass up on adding an encampment to your deck, which seems like more than enough um, for me to want to trash the estate instead. You could consider Seaway Encampment, which has a, the nice little effect of you, you put the Seaway on the encampment pile, and then even once encampments run out, if you buy the plunders, because plunders come from the same pile that encampments do, uh, the plunders will also give plus buy. Because what Seaway cares about is it only lets you gain an action card. So you couldn't gain a plunder with Seaway or anything, but the plus buy token cares about what pile it's on. And so if you Seaway the encampment, because encampment uh, is the same pile as plunder, the plunders will now also have plus buy on them. They'll be like little spices. Four. They buy a silver. Why do they want a silver? I'm not sure why they want a silver. Maybe they're just low on money. It's possible that the silver could have made sense. Hmm. So what do you do here as Viola? You can consider playing Band of Misfits as hideout to trash a card and then draw back up his cursed village. Playing it as Sage just seems worse. Oh no, they, never mind. They, they played it as hideout and drew a Sage. I was misreading that. Yeah, I like that. I like that play order. That seems good. Adding gold is actually fine here. This is going to be the first time this <laughs> this series they bought a gold and I'm not going to gripe about it. Encampment makes gold more reasonable. Now that being said, like I, I wouldn't really be looking to buy gold that much here. I mean, encampments are nice, but not like the most important thing ever. And you can get them off of treasure map if you like really want, um, once your deck gets thin. But the, the gold is not like a bad thing or anything. I think it's it's justifiable. Um, that being said, now as, uh, okay, so to, to answer the question, uh, Team OK asks, does Band of Misfits as treasure map trashing a second treasure map grant golds? The answer is no. Treasure map requires you to trash this and a treasure map from your hand, and the Band of Misfits would play a treasure map from the supply. That treasure map would fail to trash itself. You would successfully trash the other treasure map in your hand and lose it, but because you didn't trash two treasure maps, you would not get the golds from it. Uh, that would be a nice combo if it worked, but alas, it does not. Anyways, as Viola, I'd be looking to Seaway something ASAP. Because you got a gold in your deck, now you want the encampments. And with plus buy, you can pick up a bunch of encampments each turn. Like Seaway encampment would have been good. Seaway hideout or sage could have been fine. What did they end up buying, actually? They bought treasury. That seems worse. You don't... Treasury is adding money to your deck, which when you already have a bunch of money and no plus buy is not what you need. What you need right now is plus buy. Uh, so now as Viola, buy Seaway. I don't know what you put it on. Anything except treasure map I guess is fine, but buy Seaway. Look how much more money you have than you need. You've got like 9, 10, 9 if you trash, 10 if you don't. You got a hell of money in any case and uh, nothing to spend it on. I would see way encampment here, I think, but the other actions would be pretty fine as well. No! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Province is just about the last thing I would buy. Well, maybe not the last thing. Like, Curse and Estate and Duchy, I guess, are worse. But it's close to the last thing I would buy. Yeah. <sighs> You know, you can build so big here. There's, okay, wait, what's Dar Sensitive talking about? Oh, Dar Sensitive did the, did the Band of Misfits thing. They're, they're, they're learning um, by, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Trial and error? I'm not sure that's the phrase I'm, I'm look, looking for. In any case, they, they, they figured out the hard way that that does not work. Uh, yeah, they've, performatively demonstrated 
Team OK's question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that is, I imagine, a bit of a disappointment. They'll not have to get a second trash map if they want those golds. <laughs> Serendipitous for you. Uh, bad luck for Darth. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back, back to Viola's blunder. There's so many points in this kingdom. There's, like, almost infinite points. So just, like, every card in this kingdom is victory points if you trash with a bishop. So the main thing I'm looking to do here is, like... Actually, no, there's literally infinite points, actually, because you also have plunders around. You can score infinite points with playing plunders forever. Plus all the points on top of that from, like, getting golds, trashing with a bishop. There's zero chance that, like, you can take, like, a majority of points by, like, getting most of the provinces. Uh, so a, a deck that just tries to get provinces one at a time early is going to lose so hard in the long run to a deck that just builds really big, scores lots of points without lowering the province pile, buys fleet to get a free extra turn to score more points, even if you empty the provinces. Uh, yeah. I would I would not buy province here for a very, very long time. And now they see way encampment. Okay, okay. Okay, let's just forget turn eight ever happened. Viola's back on track. We're not gonna talk about that province. Uh, hide up to trash. Wait, oh, okay, bishop to trash. I don't, I don't like bishop to trash. Bishop is not a trasher. Bishop is victory points. You know, bishop says trash card, but it also says your opponent trashes a card. So if trashing is bad, no point in doing that. If trashing is good, which it usually is, it's still not good because you're helping your opponent do the good thing as much as you're helping yourself do the good thing. So the value of trashing ends up being neutral because you're giving it to both people. So for opening purposes, I would read Bishop as functionally just like plus one coin, plus one victory point. Because that's the only benefits of Bishop that are accruing only to yourself. And if you're using Bishop as a trash, you're, you're going to have a bad time. Because your opponent's deck is going to be twice as thin as yours is. Uh, I would have trashed with hideout. The one victory point is not worth the ability of my opponent to trash a copper for free. That was a risky hideout. Did they... I guess they knew there was a bunch of coppers on top. That still is quite the risk. Uh, so now, as Viola, you buy another encampment, and not totally sure what else. Two encampments is fine. So why is Darth still behind, despite that province issue? Uh, Viola had the 5-2, which does seem better here. Maybe that's it. Not totally sure. Darth did keep buying silvers, and, I don't know, extra silvers does not seem good at all. Darth still doesn't have plus... Oh, Darth just added plus buy. Um, one turn nine. That's good. I mean, it's, it's a good mindset to have, is Darth, uh, is buy the card that's most important for you rather than buy the card that's most expensive that you can afford. I think we saw Viola fall into that trap a minute ago when they bought a province instead of a card that actually helped their deck. Now, is one of those best cards for Darth to buy? Hmm. They had 13 money, so they can buy whatever they want. Um, I think plausibly so. I mean, the, the encampment does come with plus buy. They've already got a, a gold. Yeah, I, I think that might have been the best choice uh, by Darth. Now, wait till Darth discovers that those plunders will also give plus buy. Uh, Wandering Winter wants the fancy points. Yeah, Seaway on Encampment is equivalent to buying encampment if you already have Seaway on Encampment. But I guess you get to flaunt your extra wealth by... Uh, conspicuously overpaying for it. So now as Viola... No! Oh, no! No, I don't want province here. Not one bit. Not in the slightest. Uh, what could you have bought? You could have bought, like, I don't know, Plunder, Sage, Band of Misfit Sage... 
it's about the time that I'm starting thinking about um, bishoping things. Uh, I mean, if your goal is to feed the, the bishops, first things first is to make sure you're drawing your deck every turn, which requires a bit more reliability than they currently have. And then secondly, you could buy like two treasure maps for eight, and then uh, and then bishop lots of golds. Well, okay, well, we're just, we're just going to take the provinces then. I see how it is. There's infinite points to be had here. Don't don't settle. Call it underselling yourselves. Dream big. Yeah, this deck barely has economy. Build bigger. Let's see, they have six here. Is there a way to get two coins? I don't see a good way to get two coins. I would like to buy like two treasure maps or something here, but they don't even have they literally cannot afford to buy province because they have not even eight in deck anymore. Uh, in their entire deck. Blunder seems fine. Yeah, I, I think Plunder might be the best buy here. Let's see, if you buy Plunder, can you hit eight next turn? I'd like to buy two treasure maps next turn. If you bought Plunder, you'd have six in coins plus treasury plus bishop yeah you could hit eight next turn uh, i think i would have taken the plunder bishop the province and bought two treasure maps the gold's not bad um i think i value plus one buy and plus one victory point more than plus one coin if plunder would have gotten me only to seven i would have strongly considered buying gold to hit eight because hitting eight's a lot better than seven but as it turns out plunder alone was enough so i think i would take the plunder over the gold and then once you get treasure map, you'll have tons and tons of golds. So is Darth here? What do you do? I think I just play that as Sage. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be looking to get more plus buy and whatnot, more draw. Oh, nope. Okay. They were not doing that for the reason I was suggesting doing that. <laughs> they were just doing that to buy province. Uh, well... Not sure who's going to win this one. Darth has a lead. Uh, and Viola has not much money in their deck. So maybe maybe this is Darth's first game. Yeah, Darth is really cutting it close on money. Not Darth, Viola. As Viola, I mean, I, I guess you have to buy Province now. Leaving the province pile at three seems awkward. Let's see, what else do you do? I I would really love counterfactually to have not bought any provinces ever at all. But what else am I buying if I don't buy province? Eight money. You could buy two treasure maps. I don't know. If Darth gets that next province, they'll be up to twenty-eight. I, th I think I would take the province here. What's the alternative? I don't want to count on Darth not buying province two turns in a row. I'm not sure how likely that is. Now Viola's got a decent chance. Like This looks like a decent spot to be in. Viola's deck is reasonably likely to hit province twice. And Darth is now in a position where taking that province is a little awkward. As Darth, I think you bishop the silver? Oh yeah, fleet, fleet's are a, a nice buy right around now. That's a good point. As Darth, I think I'd bishop the silver and buy fleet. Um, Alright, so here you could buy fleet plunder, fleet rabble. Fleet Band of Misfits, maybe even. I think Fleet Plunder is my top choice. Yeah, almost anything that costs five. Maybe even Duchy would be fine. Oh, two Plunders is less good. 
turns out having a full extra turn is pretty good. Uh, I would rather take the fleet on a turn where I definitely have like an even number five rather than having to say maybe have an eight and one by next turn and be sad about it. Um, all right, so now it's Viola's turn to buy fleet. They have nine money, uh, fleet bishop. Did I say buy fleet? I meant buy province. Um, that that province buy I guess is not bad because. Darth can't reasonably, like, buy province and fleet or anything like that. Their deck's not quite that strong. Fleet. Take the fleet. Yeah, there we go. A state seems fine. I think Viola still wins here. They should just bishop something expensive. Like, kill that treasury for lots of money. Or not. Bishop the encampment. All right, next best thing. Yeah, I don't think Dar Sensitive's deck is quite enough to, uh, to do that many points. So, game four goes to Viola, just as game three did, and game two before it, and game one. A valiant effort by Darth, but uh, ultimately futile. I don't think their deck was strong enough to score that many points in the final turn. Alrighty. Game five. Darth's final turn, final game going first. So if they're looking to score, this would be the time. All right. Darth going to pop open a can of spinach and channel the inner Popeye. And they're coming back to steamroll these last two games. Oh, did I say eat spinach? I meant <laughs> rescue their cat from behind the door. There's a bunch of fer feral cats in my neighborhood that like to fight outside my window late at night. It's actually kind of reaching about the hours where I might expect to hear them. It's, it's kind of... Uh, <laughs> unnerving to wake up at like 3 a.m. and hear like blood-curdling cat screams. All right, game five. What have we here? This looks big. Oh, hello there, traveling fair and counting house. Is there anything that counters this? So first I'm gonna explain how this combination works. It's not often you get to see it in the wild. So traveling fair puts every single copper in your discard uh, into your hand. Oh, wait, did I say traveling? Counting House puts every single um, copper in your discard into your hand. And then Traveling Fair lets you get tons and tons of coppers. It also lets you top deck things. So there's this nice combination where you just like stuff your deck with coppers for a bit, buy a Counting House, and then you play the Counting House and have a hand with like a bajillion coppers. And then once you pull that off once, then you buy Traveling Fair a few times, you top deck four coppers, and another counting house. And then, because you top decked five cards, you don't trigger a shuffle, and now every other card is still in the discard. And you just draw a hand that's just those five cards. Then you play the counting house, you have the four coppers plus all the coppers from before. Then you do the same thing. You top deck four more coppers, top deck a counting house, and then buy some more, more coppers and send them straight to your discard. Then you play the counting house, you draw all those coppers, and pretty soon that thing just snowballs incredibly fast and you're hitting like 20 plus emptying provinces. Now the question is, is there anything here that can mess that up? For example, like Oracle, for example, is an attack that can ruin that because it flips over the top few cards of your deck or minion and then it triggers a shuffle and then it doesn't work. But uh, 
I don't see anything here that would ruin it. So I, I would definitely be doing the, the traveling for a counting house thing. My guess is we're not going to see either of them attempt it, but I, I'll be pleasantly surprised if they if they know of the Traveling Fairy Counting House combo and pull it off successfully. Uh, it's pretty resilient to like cursing attacks and whatnot. You can just like take all the curses and not even care. Well, actually, you can actually discard the first four coppers. You could like the, the first two tortures that hit you literally nothing, uh, because you just discard four coppers and. Coppers in your discard are as good for you as coppers in your hand because you can play the counting house. And then, like, third torture on where you can, like, take all the curses. And the curses don't actually hurt beyond the negative one VP because you will never, ever shuffle your deck. And so, uh... Oh, yeah, two tortures plus a masquerade would be enough to hurt. Um, although torture masquerade on its own is kind of like a... Not the strongest combo if you just, like, you take one curse and then pass it. Uh, in any case, neither of them seems to be doing the, the Traveling Fear Counting House thing. I think generally the best opening for that is, like, you buy Traveling Fear a few times and just, like, buy and top deck a bunch of coppers. <sighs> yeah, can you even... Yeah, you could get three terminals in play here, and with incredibly good luck, you have to play your Necropolis plus uh, Trusty Steed, which in first involves getting a tournament and a province. Um, so two tortures plus masquerade is not particularly likely. Uh, okay, so let's just assume for a second counting house plus traveling fear doesn't exist because I think for all intents and purposes it doesn't with these two. Uh, what's the next best thing we can be doing? So Darth opens just Overlord. Uh, Viola opens masquerade tournament. I think I like Masquerade Tournament better. Overlord's not bad. You can play it as Apprentice, which is reasonably good. Uh, if you play it as Altar, that'd be great, but you can't. Uh, I think I like Masquerade Tournament or even Masquerade Silver uh, with the goal of hitting uh, six and then buying an Altar. If I were going to open Overlord, I would consider uh, buying Traveling Fair and then buying Overlord. You'll take two more debt, but then you can top deck the Overlord and play it immediately. And then, like, you apprentice your hovel or something, and then you uh, see your overlord again turn three, and you're really happy. Something like that, I think, would be really good. Anyways, where are we at now? <laughs> Chad is figuring out how many uh, how many actions you can play. Yeah, I guess the theoretical maximum is four if your opponent is nice enough to pass you their Necropolis with Masquerade. Uh, I assume they won't, but theoretically it is possible to play four action four terminal action cards in this game. Uh, torture is going to be a lot less central, I think, in this kingdom than the last kingdom that we saw torture in because it's gonna be much much harder to stack torture is really painful when you just play a bunch of them and then they can't keep discarding they have to take the curses uh so that's one reason torture would be much weaker the other is because in this kingdom you can trash cards whereas in the other one the curses stuck around forever masquerade's a good trasher apprentice is a good trasher altar is it's a good card that happens to trash and so the curses themselves are also going to hurt less so torture might matter but i'm not as you know, rare to get all the tortures as I was before. <laughs> I think... I'm not exactly sure what my goal is here. There's a few things that I kind of want to do. I'm not sure if my goal is to get altar as quickly as possible and like get a bunch of fives off of that, or try to spike eight as quickly as possible to do the tournament stuff. Um, I'm a bit ambivalent here. Ill-gotten gains I could see the value of. I would want ill-gotten gains a lot more if I had an apprentice, because like if I had a junk card to my deck and a junk card to your deck, but my junk card costs five, I'd be happy to apprentice it later. If I'm adding ill-gotten gains and they have a masquerade and I don't have an apprentice, I don't think it's doing a whole lot for me.
<laughs> yeah. Clearly, they're they're taking the IgG into the indirect counting house traveling fair combo strategy. Uh, they're taking the scenic route towards the the correct play. I think Overlord's pretty good here. Um, or not like necessarily right, like right here this buy, but like in this kingdom, there's a lot of cards you kind of want to play, and so I could definitely see getting an Overlord at some point because it gives you some flexibility. <laughs> Is there a good way to set up Swashbuckler? Not really, but your deck is thick enough that on the right turns you could like play Overlord of Swashbuckler to start accumulating the coffers. I wouldn't mind getting a, a spigot of golds turned on with palace around. You're, you could get Trusty Steed to shove a bunch of silvers in your deck all at once and score tons of palace points at the end. Yeah. It's, it's such a shame now that it is, but the, the Counting House Traveling Fairy combo, because that thing is like so incredibly overpowered, and then everything else here is just like kind of good in somewhat awkward ways. All right, we have the two deck rows. We might see four actions played this game. Uh, if Darcy instead of also gets the trusty steed and then lines all three of those up, uh, it is now possible. <laughs> the ill-gotten gain is sitting right next to its own curse. Poetic. I would take a copy here, I think, to buy province. I think I value the tournament thingies enough. Prizes, that's the word. The tournament thingies are called prizes. Uh, trusty Steed is good. Followers is good. Bag of Gold is actually pretty good here. Princess is not bad. Not totally sure what you buy. This is also a kingdom where I think buying gold is actually less bad than the earlier games. You don't really have a whole lot of actions to go around, and so buying lots of terminal action cards is less appealing. If you were going to buy the tournament, I would think that you should have top decked the tournament. Because with six coins, you can buy Traveling Fear first, then buy tournament, and then put it straight on top of your deck. As it turns out, I guess that would have ended up poorly because their opponent had province. Yeah, bag of gold for the golds, trusty steed for the silvers, ill-gotten gains for the coppers, and you've got all the points. Sad seven to see. Still not quite at province. I would like to believe that they're specifically buying the early provinces because they're eyeing those prizes and they're like, Trusty Steed's great, I want all these prizes, I'm going to get as many as I can early and block my opponent's tournaments. But uh, the last few games suggest they might just be buying the provinces because they're like, I had eight. The province is a lot of points. Um, and I cannot conclusively deny that that is the case. Hmm, what do you buy here on six? Overlord could be good. Gold is totally fine. Apprentice is also pretty good. I, I think if I wanted a prince, I'd probably take an Overlord because the prince is like a little bit situational. But like, I would love to trash some of those ill-gotten gains with an apprentice. All right, looks like Darth is gonna hit eight here. Yeah, I like the idea of apprenticing RGG now as uh, Darth. Draw five cards. Get a nice clean shuffle with that tur tournament and uh, province going back in it. Do it, Darth. Bridge. I mean, I guess that works. 
eight, but it still gets you to eight, or well, technically seven. It gets you to province. Um, but this way it gets you a copper and keeps a jump card in your deck and draws fewer cards. Well, uh, this is looking like another Viola win. All right, last last game, I'm feeling it. Darth's going to come back in game six. And that's going to be their time to shine. They, they've, they've been in... in uh, oh, God, please, please don't. Please no pirate ship games. I, I'll, I might have to rip my hair out. Uh... I, I don't enjoy seeing the pirate ship. <laughs> yeah, I think Darth has just been in, intentionally, you know, underplaying these last five to get Viola overconfident so they can smack him around game six. I'm calling it now. They're, they're playing the long game here. Yeah, these tournaments all of a sudden look really bad with the number of provinces in Viola's deck. Ah, tournament and province in hand together. A little bittersweet. Uh, here we go. Tournament province in hand together and actually capable of being played. I think the first one you take is Steed, but as Darth, I would seriously consider... Uh, ac actually, maybe Followers is better. Darth has both of the Necropoli, if I'm not mistaken. And if I'm Darth, I'd really like to be trying to shut down Viola's deck so they can't buy those last few provinces. We'll have time to, like, I'd score them with Palace Punch or something. I think there's a serious argument for taking followers first there. Oh, I, I definitely want the Steed as well. I think there's a there's a good argument for Steed. But uh, I think if you get followers first, you have a higher chance of making the game take long enough that you come around and get the Steed again anyway. I worry if you take the Steed first, they just empty provinces too soon. I mean, not that this needs a bad choice or anything. I, I think this is a, also fine. Now just imagine this was Counting House, Traveling Fair. This game could have been uh, over, what, like turn 11? If they both did Counting House, Traveling Fair, it would probably be over like turn 9 or something. Now I'm kind of wondering, does Overlord improve the Counting House Traveling Fair thing? Like, you can open the Overlord without having to hit a five copper hand first, which could be really nice. But at the same time, you do need to see enough coppers uh, for the combo to work. And if you have a bunch of debt, then you might not have enough money to top deck the next one. I, I've i never played Overlord <laughs> Counting House Traveling Fair before, but I, I feel like Overlord might actually improve the the thing. Like if you're low on money, you could just buy four coppers and top deck an Overlord and take the debt and pay it off later. It might be. I might have to play around with it later and see if it actually works. Counting House Traveling Fair, I feel like, does have some awkwardness at the startup. Where, like, it is kind of contingent on, like, do you hit five coppers early to get the Counting House? And then do you draw the Counting House at a good point in your shuffle? If you draw the Counting House, like, at the very top of your deck, then you're really sad anyway. 
And I could see some value in like waiting to the bottom of your shuffle and then just buying the Overlord then and top decking it. Um, with the idea that you're kind of guaranteed to have a good first counting house play. Whereas with the counting house thing, you have this problem of, uh, there's no way you're hitting seven to top deck the counting house at the right time. And yeah, you might end up hitting, drawing it too early in the shuffle. I'm not totally sure. Uh, I think Darth has a non-negligible chance of winning this. Like, their, their deck is doing more now. What prizes are left? This is interesting. I can't actually right-click the prizes at the moment. Someone else try right-clicking prizes. I think it doesn't work while Darth is deliberating on the prizes. That's interesting. Princess seems pretty good. Bridge, maybe. Wait, really? Is that right? Oh, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, you, you maybe you're right. I was thinking it wasn't working because I was right clicking specifically when I was looking, but I guess that is not the case. Oh, that is that is a really sad, sad shuffle for Darth. They found both of their necropoli at the top of the shuffle with like none of the extra terminal actions. So now they've got like a bunch of draw cards down there and no way to play them. Uh, Duchy Estate here, I guess. Is silver scoring points for them? Maybe count up your cards and see whether silver or copper scores. Yeah. I have also not been tracking Palace, but like theoretically they ought have been. Yeah, I mean, if copper or silver was was worth Palace points, I would definitely have taken that over Estate. It's possible that gold was the limiting factor for Darth, um, in which case it could make sense to take the estate since they couldn't afford a gold. And that's the game. All right. Going into game six, Darth's time to shine. Comeback is coming, I can feel it. Darth is gonna be player two though. Darth Sensitive says, I'm not good about the green things. I'm not sure what that means. The provinces? IDK. Oh, landmarks. Good call. Yeah, landmarks. That's the green things. Okay, what do we do here? This looks interesting. I... I don't, I don't know exactly. Yeah, the 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 Delve Tower is looks really nice. You just like you you take all the silvers and then you get like forty points and then also the gardens are worth a million. Um, but there's also like a decent deck to be built here where like Exorcist and Monastery are good trashing. You got Ghost Town and Border Village as villages. Royal Blacksmith is draw. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... 
So provinces are 48 points. Can Delve Tower outscore that fast enough? I mean, if they empty all the silvers, that's almost 40. Can you empty all the silvers before province is empty? Probably. I, I think I'm... I'm more thinking about other tower. Border villages, masons, ruins. That's also an interesting strategy. Um, oh, I don't, I don't actually. I don't know about border village. I'm not sure how you're rushing down border villages as a rush strategy, but you could like stonemason for bunches of stonemasons, empty the ruins real fast, and like buy estates or something. Um, I think I'm leaning towards the, the Delve Tower Gardens thing. Like, if your opponent plays a rush or something, you're going to start buying the gardens if you think that you're not going to empty silvers in time. I don't totally know. There's, there's a lot of cheesy-looking strats here. Delve Tower Gardens, some, like, Stonemason, Death Cart, Ruins Rush thing. The engine could play towards tower points as well. Um, empty all the border villages, empty the ghost towns, something like that. Royal Blacksmith is kind of awkward as draw, but you also have Exorcist for like imps and will-o'-wisps. Maybe you don't even use Royal Blacksmith as your main draw. Maybe you just get like, maybe even two Exorcists and just get lots of will-o'-wisps and imps as a draw. That sounds like not bad. Yeah, I, I find this to be an interesting kingdom. Uh, the engine looks just good enough, and the Delve Tower thing looks just good enough that I would like to see a game where one person does one and the one does the other. Let's see what they do. Uh, Viola takes Delve Monastery. That's a nice way to open into the engine strategy. Darth does Delve Stonemason for two vassals. Huh. I hate that. I think I really hate that. Stone Mason for two vassals feels to me like I have a $5 hand and I just like need to buy something worth five. What can I make worth five? Oh, well, if I Stone Mason for two vassals, that's worth five. I don't know if you'd ever want a Stone Mason for two vassals in your deck. Um, I think I would open Exo. If, I, if I'm trying to build, I think I like Exo over... Delve Monastery. I want to trash the estates into Will-O-Wisps and then maybe take a... It, it could be Exo and Delve, um, even. Okay, well, Delve Gold is really gross. Um, but uh, if there's a trend in this kingdom, in this, not in this kingdom, in this match, it has been buying golds. Um, no, no shock there. Yeah, Stone Mason for Double Border Village sounds great for the engine. If you're playing the very simple, like, Delve Tower thing, you just, like, Delve four times. Uh, maybe even buy a Copper if you want to power up your gardens a bit. I could see four Delves and a Copper, just four Delves. Uh, I don't think there is really any conceivable scenario where a gold should ever be gained in this kingdom. I'm trying to think of one, and I, I really can't. Um, yes, I agree with Yuri Kamame. Pile up the Silvers. Um, I think that's my strat. I think the engine is competitive, though. I, I think there there could be a world where the, the engine wins. Actually, is Yuri listening? I don't even know if they tune into the chat. They are not. No surprise there. Um... All right. So what deck are they trying to build? I'm kind of confused by what Viola is doing. They got the death cart, but then they're trashing the villages, or the, what do you call them, the ruins anyway with their monastery. That feels kind of weird. Uh, and then Dar Sensitive been taking vassals. I'm not totally sure where either of these decks is intending to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I guess none of them is really angling for gardens. I think if I wanted to do the gardens thing, I would just not bother with monastery. I mean, there's a world where maybe you like trash all your coppers and then like buy enough silvers later that the gardens is still worth it. But I, I think if I wanted the gardens thing, I would just not bother trashing in the first place. <sighs> Eleven, delve stonemason border village. Uh, just a bajillion delves, also fine, I guess. Delve province. Which thing? I listed a lot of things. The. Uh, I, I still think I would take the five delves. Um, tower points are a thing. Um, I mean, I would, I would think that they're not... I really can't tell. Because if I weren't trying to build the engine, I don't think I would bother with the monastery. I think I would just leave the copper and estates in my deck and score with gardens... Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Even if you're playing money, I think the Delve Tower and the Gardens thing both make me not want to, to green super early. I mean, th this is true. I imagine, I imagine they're just going for provinces. Um, but if you limit out all the alternative possibilities, then there's really not a whole lot to, to comment on. Like they, they will ultimately deterministically buy province, even if that is not the best strategy. Okay, so Veal is at 23 cards. Dar Sensitive is at somewhere in that vicinity as well. Not enough for gardens to look super great. The gardens will probably be worth like a duchy-ish amount by the end of the game. Probably four. Maybe five. Probably four. If I'm dark sensitive and I see my opponent has taken early provinces, then I am definitely going for Delve Tower and Gardens. I'm not gonna try to outrush them on the province thing. Oh, it's a quintuple delve, isn't it? Yeah, they had eleven that the turn that I was commenting on that. Quintuple delve, like that's gonna be five points on its own if silver's empty, and silver's will empty if you if you play that way, and so the province is one more point. But comparing, comparing that to five silvers, I would take five silvers. Oh, we want silver anyway. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, so four extra silver versus the province. Yeah, still four points to six points. That's not a big enough points difference for me to not want the the delves. Um, they help you buy provinces and you're about to trigger shuffle. Plus, uh, those extra silvers make gardens viable. Like when your non-province turns later in the game, you can be considered buying gardens. I don't I don't think I would have taken province there. Uh, even upon further reflection. The ghost towns don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Does Viola even have multiple terminal action cards? Actually, does Viola even have any terminal action cards? They've now trashed the, the death cart. Um, although, obviously, they, they had that when they they bought the, the ghost towns. Yeah, I don't think either of these decks should have a ghost town in it. The engine could have a ghost town in it, a few of them, but uh, they're not going that route. Taking a ghost town very late. Yeah, I guess there's like some conceivable in-game scenario where you hit like three and the ghost town is better than an estate. Um, 
very niche cases that have not arisen. Uh, I'm now... They're now doing, I think, kind of the opposite of what I've expected them to do. So, Dar Sensitive, being behind, should really be playing for not the provinces. You don't want to lower the provinces faster when you're behind on the early greening. Darth should be playing for the Delft Tower and Gardens. They are the ones who took the province. By contrast, Viola, who's in the lead, has now decided, after buying two provinces, never mind, I'm doing the Delve Tower thing now, and just taking a ton of silvers. Um, that don't, don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Well, they got rid of the gold, so I can, I can appreciate the sentiment of that. Wait, no, they, they bought a new gold! Why are you buying a gold? You could delve for three silvers, which were worth three points. The silver pile's at, like, five. Oh, yay, yay. Oh, no. Well, they didn't take... Did they miss province? Oh, yeah, they had six, I guess. That's fair. Wait... No, 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 the, the, the turn I was referring to, they didn't miss province. They had 10 coins, and they delved five times. Um, yeah. Yeah, obviously if you miss province, you can continue delving. But the, the turn I was originally referring to was when they hit province, and then continued delving. All right, well, Viola now has 50 points. Didarth's 16. I'm going to say this one's on lock. All right, so at risk of calling it too early, I think we can say this one is a 6-0 for Viola. That's a nice way to go into the season. I believe Viola was 4-2 after their first uh, league match, so they're now up 10-2 uh, in their first two games. That, not your first two games, first two matches. It's a pretty solid lead, I would think. Darth was 1.5 to 4.5. So they're now 1.5, 10.5. Um, that's a little concerning. Maybe they can pull it back in the last four games. Last four matches, I mean. Last three matches? Last three matches. All right. So is Darth... They're just going to keep him in the provinces. I mean, like, your only chance of winning here would be, like, I don't know, some crazy gardens thing or something. Um, realistically, the, the correct play for Darth is the resign button. But as we saw, and I think it was game one, Darth uh, Darth doesn't resign. Darth does the, the Victor Crumb resign, where they buy the last province. Oh, that's stylish. Okay, <laughs> Darth going for the fancy points. I like the idea of that. Oh, I wouldn't have trashed the silver. I would have trashed, like, Ghost Town into two estates or something and then bought gardens. I'd keep the silver around so that I could buy gardens, which is worth points. I mean, realistically, I'd resign, but supposing I weren't resigning for some reason, then I would do that. Yep, Darth does the fancy resign. All right, good match. 6-0 uh, for Viola, and we'll see you all later.